While the eyes of the world are focused on the impact COVID-19 is having on human health and economies, conservationists are calling for more attention to be paid to our closest relatives in the animal kingdom. Great apes. If it's given a chance to jump over to them, our newest human virus could wipe out an entire species. And while lockdowns have become almost inevitable for humans, for great apes, they mean indirect threats that could even amplify the immediate impact of COVID-19. All four great ape species, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, and orangutans, have experienced considerable decline in population size and range over the past few decades. The IUCN Red List of Threatened Species lists all the great apes as either endangered or critically endangered. The top three threats are habitat loss, poaching, and infectious diseases. All great apes share about 98% of their DNA with us. They also share susceptibility to several human pathogens. In the past, Research has shown that chimps can contract the common cold, and the Ebola virus is thought to have killed thousands of chimpanzees and gorillas in Africa. International wildlife health specialists suggest that we should assume all great apes are susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. In other words, great apes are currently at even greater risk than normal. For decades, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries have played a crucial role in protecting these endangered species. Their groundbreaking work has helped the numbers of great apes to remain constant or even increase, as in the case of mountain gorillas. About half of the world's remaining population of mountain gorillas lives in the dense vegetation of Uganda's Bwindi Impenetrable Forest National Park. and the other half in three national parks in the Virunga Mountains. The united conservation efforts of the four parks in these areas help to pull the species back from the brink of extinction. The total population currently stands at 1,063 individuals. Chimpanzees are our closest relatives, but over the last century, their population decreased dramatically until it hit its low point around the 1970s. Since then, though, chimpanzee numbers have been growing incrementally at a rate of a few thousand a year. Nowadays, numbers are estimated at between 130,000 and 300,000. This kind of growth can be attributed to intensive conservation efforts, like the ones in Kibale National Park in southeastern Uganda. The country's biggest population of chimpanzees lives here in the wild. But with many countries now on lockdown, COVID-19 has dealt a major blow to the wildlife conservation and protection activities of the national parks and sanctuaries that rely on revenue from ecotourism. One sanctuary that has been hit extremely hard is Ngamba Island Chimpanzee Sanctuary, located on Lake Victoria. For more than 20 years, Ngamba Island has been a safe haven for chimps that can't live in the wild anymore. 50 chimps that were orphaned or rescued from the illegal wildlife trade currently live here in a controlled, captive environment. Since the gates of the sanctuary had to close, a smaller staff is now working a 20-day shift, which is twice as long than before. They isolate on the island during their shift to reduce the risk of infection. And they film the following insights. Uh, my name is Amos. I'm one of the caregivers at the Number Island Chimpanzee Sanctuary. We are taking care of chimpanzees, which are known to be our closest relatives. In everything that we are doing, we have to protect ourselves as well as the chimpanzees. Like Amos, the staff have to wear overalls, gloves, and masks. 
But there's a shortage of masks in the country, and the sanctuary needs to make its limited stock last as long as possible. Sometimes, even gloves run out or are too expensive for the sanctuary to afford. I wish we could have grab. For the first 10 days of their shift, the staff have to wear full personal protective equipment. Only when they're sure that they aren't displaying any symptoms of the disease can they limit the use of masks and gloves. The internal enclosures are thoroughly scrubbed with soap every day. And while they were disinfected with bleach every week, since the outbreak, the staff have started disinfecting them every two to three days. They'd like to do so daily, but as the sanctuary is no longer receiving any income from tourism, they simply can't afford to. This scene was filmed before COVID-19. Since then, all kinds of direct contact have been suspended, like direct feeding, behavioral training, and research. Or birthday parties. Luckily, a chimp's day is mostly the same as it was before COVID-19. Their keepers try hard not to disrupt their routine. The chimps typically wake up at daybreak and start pant hooting and greeting each other. About an hour later, they're released into the forest. While the chimps were in their overnight enclosure, the vets and keepers made their daily observations, while other keepers checked the outdoor enclosure. For the staff, it's time to prepare breakfast. The chimpanzees are fed four times a day. First breakfast, then a mid-morning feed, followed by mid-afternoon feeding, and finally dinner in the evening. It's mostly fruit and vegetables on the menu. Out in the forest, they do what chimps do, until feeding is on the schedule. The chimps appear on time in the feeding area of their external enclosure when the keepers arrive with their well-stocked buckets. The forest itself can't provide enough food for them. At only 38 hectares, it's too small for 50 chimpanzees. In the wild, a group this size would need at least five times this area of natural forest. So the chimps on Ngamba Island depend a lot on the food from their caretakers. In the evening, the chimps return to their sleeping enclosure. Their dinner is a piece of cabbage and a millet porridge fortified with soy. $4,000 is the annual cost of food and medical care for one chimp. And now that there are no tourists, the sanctuary is relying on donations more than ever before. It's a very uncertain time for the animals, as well as the staff. Situations like that are worrying conservationists a lot at this time. With tourists staying at home and conservation-based ecotourism on hold, the whole system of protecting wildlife and encouraging local people to step back from exploiting nature could be beginning to totter. We spoke to Peter Appel from Uganda's Jane Goodall Institute. There's been a lot of investment uh, made in conservation over the last decade or, or, or half a century by various organizations, including the Jane Goodall Institute, uh, working with communities, working with government to ensure that um, habitats that have been previously degraded are restored. Uh, communities that rely on, on wildlife are given alternatives and incentives not to do so. Uh, education and awareness being conducted to try and change knowledge, attitudes and practices. This investment has been huge. Our concern is that with this COVID-19 outbreak, uh, there's potential reversal uh, in this, despite the great effort that has been done by many organizations. Another effect of the lockdown is that there are too few rangers out in the field. So is it just a question of time until illegal activities start having an effect? Yes, definitely. Um, we are beginning to get reports trickling in where people are going in and hunting, uh, cutting trees especially, 
and this concerns us because the lockdown now, like I said, in Uganda has been uh, instituted for the last six or so weeks, uh, and we envision that this is going to extend. Uh, it may seem like a very short period of time, but it doesn't take six weeks for somebody to cut one tree or hunt five or a hundred animals. It just takes a day. Uh, and, and if they're out there doing their best, we're in trouble. This is where the biggest worry lies. The more people that enter the forests unnoticed, the higher the risk that the virus will be spread to great apes. In my personal experience treating chimpanzees, I find that respiratory infections have actually been the hardest for us to manage. Uh, when I just started my work uh, over 20 years ago, I was working in a captive environment, and uh, the most difficult cases that I had was treating respiratory infection uh, in the chimpanzee population uh, in, in captivity. Now, shift that to a wild situation. Once this virus jumps into the wild population, it is very hard to manage. Uh, we do not uh, absolutely want an instance where we have to even attempt to try and treat them because they're going to be successful. For the great apes, it's an uphill struggle that's taking place in national parks, sanctuaries, and other conservation organizations all over Africa. It's a battle against the virus itself, but also against its impact on the fragile ecosystem that safeguards these species. If lockdowns persist for months, the consequences could be devastating for the already endangered ape population and the communities around them. If you'd like to help, please stay informed and do consider donating if you can. You'll find all the information you need in the description below.